Hello, this is Quantitative Methods, Lecture 5, Introduction to Probability. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the probability and the relevant concepts. We will also talk about the basic operations of probability. What is probability? Are you bringing it to the game? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to leave it. And maybe we're going to the game. Where are we going now? Uh, to see someone about my job. I don't understand. You don't understand what? Are we going to the game? I said possibly we're going to the game. Do you know what possibly means? Like probably? No, probably means there's a good chance that we're going. Possibly means we might, we might not. What does probably mean? It means we have a good chance. And what does possibly mean? I know what it means. What does it mean? It means that we're not going to the game. <laughs> How did you get so smart? Because you're smart. The probability is a likelihood or chance of something happening. In a quantitative methods, probability is a numerical measure of the chance of a particular event occurring. Probability takes a range of 0 and 1. If the probability of something is 0, that means this event is impossible. If the probability of something happening is 1, that means it is certain. Or the probability can take any value between 0 and 1. A very good example of 50% or 0.5 probability is tossing a fair coin. If you toss a fair coin, you have two options. You either get head or a tail. Probability of getting a head is 0 0.5 and probability of getting a tail is also 0 0.5. And we have to remember that all the probabilities will equal to 1. Meaning, if we toss a coin, we have only two options. We either get a head or a tail. And the probability for head is 0 0.5, tail 0 0.5, and if we add it, it's going to be 1. Now, what about if we use a die? The die has six sides. And what is the probability of getting, let's say, 6? If you throw a die, you have 6 options. You either get 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, or 6. And overall, they must be, the probability of each of these must be equal to 1. And the chance of getting one of them is equal to any other of them. For example, the probability of getting 1 is equal to 1 over 6. Probability of getting 2 is equal to 1 over 6. Probability of getting 3 is also equal to 1 over 6. Probability of getting 4 is 6. Probability of getting 5 and probability of getting 6 is also 6. If we add them up, we're going to get 6 over 6, and which is equal to 1. That means the probabilities of all of these choices or outcomes should be equal to 1 or 100%. But probability of getting one of them should be equal to only 1 over 6 because we have 6 sides and they all have the same chances to be drawn. Consider a box. Now, let's say we have 6 blue marbles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we have 3 red marbles. One, two, three. And let's say we have two black marbles and one green marble. So I'm going to make this a green marble. Now, 
You may be asked, what is the probability of getting a red marble? If you put your hand in the box and choose one marble. Now you may be asked to find out the probability of getting a red marble at your first draw. So you put your hand in a box and then choose one marble and that has to be red. So what is the probability of getting a red marble? Let's say that the number of desired outcomes is, so we want red marble. Probability of red marble, probability of red marble is equal to, on the numerator we have to find total number of red marbles which is one, two, three. And we have to divide this number by the total number of the possible options. So we, how many possible options do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So the probability of having a red marble in your first draw is going to be 1 over 4, which is 0 0.25 or 25%. Now you know how to calculate the probability of drawing a red marble. Now, can you do the same thing for, let's say, what is the probability of getting a blue marble? The probability of getting a blue marble is equal to so you count all the numbers, all the marbles that are blue, which is six, divided by total possible outcomes, which is 12. And the probability is one over two, which is equal to 0 0.5 or 50%. Now you can calculate the same thing as probability of getting green marbles or black marbles by dividing it by the total number of possible outcomes. If we add up all the probabilities of probability of red plus probability of blue plus probability of the black and probability of green, we always will get one. Now let's get acquainted with concepts of probability. Now the first concept you want to talk about is the experiment. Experiment, as you know from your chemistry, physics or biology classes, we also have some experiments in statistics. But an experiment can be rolling a die. And every experiment is called a trial. So you a repetitive experiment so you you roll the die 20 times 100 times so this is every trial and the result of the experiment or trial is called an outcome since this die has only six sides the sample size for this experiment would be one two three four five and six so these are all possible outcomes if you throw a die. You're not going to get 7, you're not going to get 8, you're not going to get any number but from 1 to 6. This is called a sample space. So it includes 6 numbers. A sample point can be any number. And we also have a concept called an event. An event can be a subset of a sample space. For example, you may be asked to find the probability of, let's say, the event A. What is the probability of getting an even number? And B is what is the probability of getting an odd number? So from here, you say, you count all the even numbers. So here we have one, two, three even numbers and the probability of the event A happening is three over total number of possible outcomes. That's one over 
to 50%. And the same thing for odd, because we have equal number of even and odd numbers. As examples for experiments, we can tell tossing a coin. The experimental outcomes would be head or tail. And sample space would be head tail. Another experiment can be applying for a job. And experimental outcomes for that would be you can be hired or, or you can be not hired. And the sample space would be hired or not hired. Or you can roll a die as we talked about it before. So there are six outcomes and the sample space includes numbers from one to six. Playing a game ha can have three outcomes. You can lose, you can win, or you can draw. Or writing a business can be another experiment. And the outcomes can be, you can make a profit, you can make a loss, or you can make a break even. Meaning you cannot, you, well, you can, you can basically earn what you have invested and that's it. Now we're gonna talk about types of counting rules. The first type would be multiple. So what if we are asked to find the probability of tossing a coin not once, but two times? or three times. So that would be a multiple step. Then we're gonna talk about combination and permutation. Let's talk about multiple step now. Let's toss a coin twice. What will be the first step? Step one would be to toss a coin and what are the outcomes? So you toss a coin, there are two outcomes. The first outcome would be head and the second outcome would be tail. Now you toss a coin the second time. So the second step would be you again get a hat or tail. And at the same time, if you get tail at the first step, on the second step, you either get head or tail. Now, how many possible number of outcomes do we have? Let's count. So the first possible outcome is head, head. Head in the first step, head in the second step. The second one is head, tail. Head in the first step and tail in the second step. The third one is tail, head. Tail in the first step, head in the second step. And the fourth one is tail, tail. Tail in the first step, tail in the second step. Now, overall, we have one, two, three, four possible outcomes. Sample set is equal to head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail. So overall, we have four possible outcomes. But how can we know this four without actually drawing this diagram? So a very simple rule is that in each step, you have to count total number of possible outcomes and just multiply each step's total number of possible outcomes. For example, in the first steps, there were two possible outcomes and in the second step you also had two possible outcomes. For example, in the first step you had head or tail, in the second step you also had head or tail. So two multiplied by two you get four. So sample set consists of four total possible outcomes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to solve a multiple step probability question in a tree diagram. Let's consider tossing a coin twice. All right, so step one, head, tail, and that's step two, head, tail, head, tail. And now the outcomes are head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail. So these are four outcomes in our multiple step question. 
So let's compute the probability of each happening. So overall, overall there are four outcomes. So they may ask you the question, what is the probability of probability of both heads? All right? The probability of both heads means if you toss a coin twice, both times you're gonna get heads. And the probability is only one out of four, which is one out of four, which is 0 0.25. Now, what is the probability of at least one hat? So at least means, at least means one or two hats. Well, let's count. Here we have two heads, here we have one head, here we have one head, here we have, have no heads. That means we have to consider 3 over 4 and the answer is 70, 0 0.75. Alright, so this is the situation. Okay. Now, compute the probability of, let's say, no hats. No hats. Meaning, what is the probability you get no hats at all? Alright? And that would be the answer. The, the answer would be you look at the options where there are no hats and there is only this answer. So that would be 1 over 4 again 0 0.25 right okay so probability of no hats is 0 0.25 now 